Hi, I'm Gordon van der Spey and today we're at the Mission Headquarters and we're going to tie a very simple ant pattern called the Easy Peasy Ant. And this is a pattern from my new book, The Feather Mechanic 2 Beyond the Pattern. If you want to grab a copy of this book, don't panic, you too can be a feather mechanic. Click on the link below. Okay, so to tie this fly we need the following. I like using a Hamakatsu C12 scud hook because it gives me a pattern that sits nice and deep in the surface film. We need lava lace dry fly foam. This is an epizote foam. You'll notice it has nice texture, which is very natural in terms of the way light reacts to the material. It also compresses well under thread tension. Then we need a post of polypropylene. This will help us see the pattern easier. We need a dry fly hackle, which will help us position the pattern in the film. A little bit of iced up peacock. And then a CDC feather. Right, so what makes this fly special? So what distinguishes an ant? You've basically got an abdomen and a thorax head section separated by a very thin waist. That's a very definite, definite thing that distinguishes an ant. I've never understood when people put a hackle slap bang in the middle of that waist and go crazy because what it does is it just ruins the entire profile of the pattern. Okay, so we've got two balls separated by a waist. We've got a white polypropylene post, which just helps you see the pattern better. We've got a genetic hackle which gives you structure and just helps us seat that pattern in the film nicely. Then we've got a few CDC bobs and what those bobs do is give the pattern inbuilt mobility. If I blow on it you can see that subtle movement and that's quite an important thing. The nice thing about this fly is it's so easy to tie. You can tie these things in five minutes flat and it's got all the triggers you need for a killer ant pattern. Right. Let's tie the fly. Okay, so the thread I'm going to use is Griffith Shear 14 Aught Red. Because red's a fantastic trigger color. So, I'm going to attach the thread at my eye. And just wrap a nice smooth thread base. Every now and then, I'm going to untwist my thread to keep it coming in flat. And run that thread all the way down the bend of the hook. Notice how I use the tag end of the thread to help me place the thread neatly next to each other, these thread wraps. Okay, right down into the bend. And then I come up with my thread to where I'm gonna start the body of my fly, which is about there. Okay, cut off the excess, just like that. Okay, next up, I've got a very thin strip of foam that I've cut. When I cut this I normally do it with a ruler and a scalpel. Okay. And I just tie this in right over there. Tie it in nice and tightly. Then wrap your thread back. All the way down the bend. It doesn't need to be neat. And just tie it in. Okay. Now you fold the foam over, okay, make sure your thread is nice and flat so it doesn't cut your foam, a loose wrap, and then you just tighten, okay, two or three wraps, lift this foam, make a locking wrap under it, okay, and bring your thread forward, about two or three millimeters behind the eye of the hook. Then all we do is we stretch this foam, 
and we cut it. And that's the little abdomen of the fly. Then next, I'm going to take a length of polypropylene. And I'm going to tie that in right over there. What I like to do when I do a post is I'll move my, my polypropylene okay, to a 90 degree angle to the hook shank. Make a couple of figure of eight wraps like that. Okay. And then what I'll do is I'll use my tying hand. I'll lift it up. And with my non-tying hand, I'll make a little base. So that I can wrap hackle around this. Notice how I wrap with my non-tying hand. Use the fourth finger from my tying hand to hold it in place. Collect it again. And continue the wraps up the post. Nice and neat. It's important to keep them neat and smooth because when you wrap the hackle around there, you need a smooth base. If you don't do that, your hackle barbs are going to tilt out of alignment. So keep things smooth and neat. When you've done that, you can let go. And you can see how stable that, that post is. It's very stable. Next, I'm going to use a little bit of hackle, strip it over there. I'm going to tie it in with the shiny side facing me. So what I'll do is I'll, the side of the hackle that's going to face the post, I strip a couple of bobs off there. And what that does is it just ensures that my first wrap is neat. By doing that, Everything that follows just works. You don't want that hackle rachis to, to be twisting on you while you're wrapping it, okay? Now, I tie the hackle in at the base, just like that, very gently. Hold it up, make sure that the shiny side faces me, and I just tie it in. Okay, next up we're going to use our ice dub, you don't need much of this, very little, spread that along your thread, okay and twist it on, in one direction, one direction only, I'm twisting from a clockwise direction if you view it from the top, and this just ensures a nice tight and compact dubbing noodle so i'll wrap my dubbing on the back and the front right let's get that a bit neater there end with a thread at the back and let it hang towards you now a cool trick tilt the fly in the vise slightly and in that way your thread will never slide off the eye Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hackle and I'm going to just wrap that down the post. Very gently, like that. And when I get to the bottom, I'm just going to tie that hackle off on the actual base of the post. Two wraps is ample. Okay, so there you've got your hackle. And then I'm gonna cut I'm gonna cut the excess off. Dunk. Okay. Now the final step is to make sure our thread is flat. Okay, and you'll notice if I leave my bobbin holder to hang, just like that, that thread will naturally untwist. Okay? You can help it along. And then you can put it over a fingernail, okay? 
and you can literally poke it with your needle separate it okay get a get a finger in there like that put your CDC bulbs in there okay get it right on the edge of them there that's good and then open and remove make sure that's nice and tight and now all I'm going to do is twist this thread up notice this is at a 90 degree angle very important if I don't do that this material is going to twist up on itself a bit like a candy floss you don't want that you want a bottle brush effect so I do this and I just lift and notice the bottle brush effect you got going there okay lift and that's perfect now what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this before each wrap I brush this these bulbs out of the way and I wrap them brush wrap brush wrap brush wrap brush wrap brush wrap brush wrap okay do one last one there put my thread just behind my eye if you whip finish when the threads twisted up very often it'll actually break off during the whip finish also if you have flat thread you get a far neater head okay so make sure your thread is flat let it untwist now I use my hands and I whip finish with my hands and I like this because look at how I can move everything out of the way with my left hand how I've got a, a lot of control I can put the thread exactly where I want it and it's extremely tactile I can feel what I'm doing okay just cut the thread off there okay and then what I do is I'm going to literally massage everything into place just like that so I'm going to trim the post at a little bit of an upward angle like that and the reason I do that is to give myself a larger surface area to look at when I'm fishing the fly the angler is at an elevated angle okay so by doing that you've got uh, way more to actually look at also because those fibers are trimmed at an angle when light hits that it reflects off it quite well so you see that fantastically too interesting to note just watch this Look at what these CDC bulbs do. Notice that hackle hardly moves. But those little bulbs move in the drift and they just give you subtle, subtle, subtle movement. And fish love that, especially in slower water. Okay, so if you're looking for an easy and efficient ant pattern, tie on an easy peasy ant and hang on to your bat. I'm